much. Uh, so my name is Josef Schönherr. I'm from the Technical University of Darmstadt. And today I'm going to present something on the determination of um, the peak crack growth thresholds from crack growth data. Yeah, okay. So to keep it short, so um, what are we talking about? We are talking about the, the peak growth threshold which is usually abbreviated as delta KCH. So what is it? Um, accordingly to the ASTM standard um, for fatigue <coughs> crack growth testing, the um, fatigue crack growth threshold is defined as the asymptotic value of delta K, so that's the load um, value used in linear, electric, uh, linear elastic fracture fatigue fracture mechanic at which the um, crack growth rate, the ADN, approaches zero. So if you look on the right-hand side, there's a diagram, the typical fatigue crack growth curve. So we have the um, fatigue crack growth rate um, over the load, the um, psychic stress intensity factor delta K. And if a log in a log-log diagram, you can see on the left-hand side, there's an, yeah, an uh, end value, the uh, threshold value. Um, but since an asymptotic value of uh, um, value that approaches zero is not um, that precise in technical definition. The ASTM as well as the ISO standard committees um, introduced so-called operational definitions relating the threshold stress intensity factor delta K KTH to a particular crack growth rate. So for ASTM, that's 10 to the power of minus 7 millimeters per cycle. And for the ISO, it's 10 to the power of minus 8 millimeters per cycle crack growth rate. So you have a factor of 10 in crack growth. And if you want to evaluate the um, um, threshold against um, fatigue crack growth, you're dealing with test data. And therefore, you have to um, use a special fitting that is uh, suggested in the standards. So both standards suggest to use a best fit straight line in order um, to adapt the test data. And they also define that delta K is the dependent variable. So you are having a standard a linear fit with um, two parameters in a log-log space. And as a uh, fit interval, so the raw data you use um, for fitting um, your fatigue crack growth data, use data um, that starts from the um, threshold um, crack recuperation rate and use one decade of um, data in um, terms of crack recuperation rate. Um, they furthermore define that you need at least, uh, at least five um, data points that are almost equally spaced in the crack recuperation direction. And in order to calculate um, the threshold stress intensity range, you uh, just evaluate the equation um, that follows after fitting. But since there's no real in detail, uh, detail definition of the method, um, how to uh, fit this data, you have plenty of room for interpretations. I will motivate my studies on a fatigue crack growth curve um, we obtained from a um, structural steel using an eight-point bending on single edge notch bending uh, specimens um, tests in laboratory air. And here we did a, a test at a constant load ratio of about 0.8. So we usually do not accept uh, that there's a crack closure or some other intrinsic effects. If we want to obtain the uh, uh, fatigue crack growth threshold simply by meter reading, um, you go to 10 to the power of minus seven, seven millimeters per cycle crack growth rate regarding the ASTM operational definition. And then we'll get an um, delta K of delta K threshold of about 2.8 uh, megapascals square root meter. Same for ISO, where you can obtain a um, threshold of about 2.3 megapascals square root meter. And so if we're applying the ASTM standard suggestions for evaluating the threshold value and just using a straightforward assumption we are using all data points that we have in an interval of 10 to the power of minus 7 millimeters per cycle up to 10 to the power of minus 6 millimeters per cycle um, crack growth rate and applying a simple linear fit you can see we get a um, intersection at about 2.72 um, 
megapascal square root meter. So we are inducing an artificial conservatism just because of the evalu evaluation method. Um, another interpretation of the standards text, which um, is in compliance to the standards text, is just using the first n data points where n is just the value greater or equal than five. So we are starting here in this example with the first um, data point we have at around two uh, 10 to the power of minus seven millimeters per second crack growth rate. And then we are calculating successively um, uh, linear fit for five, six, seven, and so on points. And then we are selecting the fit with the best Pearson ratio. As you can see, um, this uh, fit, yeah, fits better to the test data and the artificial conservative induced by this fit is reduced in comparison to the fits over all data points. But um, however, the straight line fits, so neither of both uh, straight line fits is um, able to represent the data curvature. And furthermore, you have to state that the results um, you gain with the standards method really depend on the interpretation of the standard suggestions how to evalu evaluate um, the fatigue crack growth threshold. So if you have a look in the literature, in 1981, um, Mr. Bucci introduced um, a fit using a four-parameter Weibull function. So he's one of the authors of the ASTM standard. And he suggested um, using all data points for fitting um, the crack growth data. And if you evalu evaluate um, the ASTM threshold, you get a pretty good approximation. But if you're looking in the ISO threshold, it's a bit um, yeah, light here on this beamer, you can see it's slightly non-conservative. The second um, method that is not directly connected to a standard, but um, yeah, it's written in Vincity of the ASTM standard was proposed by Döker in 1997. So he proposed to use an interval of five to the power of minus eight millimeters per cycle up to uh, one to the power of minus six millimeter per cycle crack growth rate and evaluate a linear fit on linear data. And in order to calculate the threshold stress intens intensity factor, you have to calculate the intersection point with the zero crack growth rate. And as you can see here, you get a threshold stress intensity uh, factor of about 2.6 uh, megapascal square root reader was is really conservative regarding the ASTM standard and let's say not really applicable for the ISO standard. So what we've done, we've um, looked for other fitting functions that may represent the data in a better way and motivated by the, let's say, almost uh, hyperbolic shape if you change the DADN, the da uh, delta K axis. We uh, found a three-parameter polynomial with a neg negative exponent, which is able to fit the uh, crack growth data in a satisfactory manner. So on the left-hand side, you can see the fit using our three-parameter polynomial for the depicted data. And as you can see, we have here an exponent of minus 4.6, and uh, we get a pretty good approximation of the data. In order to reduce the complexity of fit, we have then fixed the uh, exponent to four. So that's mainly for this data set. And as you can see, it only introduces um, minimal artificial conservatism and already provides a pretty good fit with only having two parameters. Um, now, since we have a curve and not a straight line, we are also able to augment the fit interval. So here we are using the fit interval that is uh, proposed by Döker. And as you can see, we can reduce the conservatism. But on the other hand, we are also able to um, extrapolate data. So we are only using here the green dots in order to calculate the fatigue crack growth threshold according to the ASTM operational definition. And so we extrapolated about 50% of our, our data. And as you can see, we get a pretty good fit. And um, in order to ensure that this uh, is a robust matter, we um, studied a larger data set. Um, we um, 
yeah, measured during a um, research project with BAM in Berlin. We had a um, total of 29 specimens, so we are talking here about of one year of total machine runtime in order to obtain this data. And as you can see, um, the linear fits um, have a higher standard deviation as well as a lower um, threshold uh, for the ASTM as well as the ISO, uh, ISO threshold in comparison to our um, fit. So, and if we're dealing with data that are obtained as a lower load ratio, so that we can or must accept that we have rack closure phenomena. Here, for example, we have a data set um, that it was recorded at a load ratio of 0.1 with the same material, same specimen time, and so on. You can see that if we are using just all data points, that the fit is really conservative. So it does not, yeah, even in a, yeah, it does not really respect the data. And if we're using a fit using the first n data points, and here n is actually five, um, we get a better approximation. But as you can um, imagine, even if you have another spacing of data points or just less data points in this region, the result would be real different. So um, the uh, result using the linear fit here would be really dependent on how you obtain this crack growth uh, curve. If we are using the three parameter method, so we are not fixing the third parameter to fourth, just we are using um, three parameter, uh, three free parameters, we can get a really good approximation here. So to conclude on this method, the straight line fits are not able to represent the test data. And if we use the three parameter uh, polynomial for, um, yeah, this test data having a uh, crack closure, we can get a pretty good approximation and still we get a conservative test. So to sum up, um, yeah, so the standards suggest methods that are not that precisely described. So you have plenty of room for interpretation. Um, what, yeah, it's a kind of weakness of the standards in this kind. And we proposed using a two parameter polynomial for the high, lo high load ratios where we do not accept um, crack closure. And for the investigated data set, this um, method even allowed for expo extrapolation of um, yeah, threshold uh, stress perspective. And if we use the three parameter method, we always get or always got for the investigated data a conservative fit that is able to represent the test data in a quite better way and in all cases reduce the artificial conservativeness and reduce the standard deviation between um, the tests. So you can read it all in an upcoming publication and we'd like to thank um, the uh, um, German Federation of Industrial Research Association for funding this research and therefore I'm at the end of my presentation. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Joseph.